Sandman is going, Marley's, uh, the bottom line is, uh, Doobie and I've talked about Sandman the whole time. Uh, constant dialogue, just monitoring his progress. Real good camp, real good exhibition, real good start here. We can't get him. He can't get on the power play in front of the guys we got. Can't get on the penalty kill in front of the guys we got. So in the end, a real good night's 14 minutes. And we just think managing our assets and, and getting our team to be the best we can. We've done a real good job, we feel, as an organization developing players. And this is the best thing for his development. And in the meantime, you know, we got guys here that uh, can play in those roles of the minutes that are allowed. So this gets him on the power play, on the penalty kill, in all situations defensively that he wasn't getting an opportunity with us. So what was the message to him out the door? Just Well, just that. But to be honest with you, when you send a guy down, everything you say after you're going down, he doesn't hear. So what you do is you go down there in four and five days. I'll take the video stuff. I'll sit down with Sheldon. Then we'll go through it. That's a way better time to message. Uh, when someone gets bad news, uh, I mean, they don't hear you. So we'll revisit that in a little bit. Yet I don't even know, to be honest with you, if he thinks it's that bad news. He knows how many minutes he was playing. And when you're sitting there and you know you're not getting to go out there and, you, and you'd like to be going out there, it's not as much fun. Now, when you're 27 and that's your job in the National League, it's a lot of fun. When you're 18 or whatever he is, it's not a lot of fun. Is there some value to playing 12 to 15 minutes in the NHL as opposed to a lot in the NHL? Yeah, I think so. But if we felt we could get him those minutes on the power play and on the penalty kill, so we can't replicate it. And it's not like he's not getting another opportunity. But we went back and forth. You know, I think that's a good question. We went back and forth on that a whole bunch to see what we could do. And just by looking at our group and what we're doing, we weren't affording him those opportunities. And, and I'm not saying he should have. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just the fact is we couldn't get it, and he's going to get him there. How will the dynamic work with Hall, Marincin, uh, Dermott, and Gravel? Yeah, so you know, good question. We're just going to watch him, and whoever plays the best is going to get to play. And so when Dermy's ready, obviously, you know, he's going to get an opportunity to play. In the meantime, those guys continue to battle for jobs. How does Sandman handle the physicality, Mike? He seemed to be targeted at times in a few of those games. Yeah, no, for sure. It's just all part of getting used to it. That's the other thing. I didn't like it last game when he got hit in the head. You know, as an 18-year-old, I didn't, I didn't have much appreciation for that, to be honest with you. But I also say to myself, what am I doing? And so, in other words, is you want to be ready for everything. And I think that's a big part of managing your assets is you got to look after them the best way you can. And, uh, and sometimes you got to be a prudent parent. What did you like about Gravel in the training camp? Next well, I thought he was real good. I thought he had a real good camp, big body, defense, long stick, uh, can get guys on his back, make little plays. Um, you know, we'll just get him up to speed here, and then he gets in a game, he'll go from there. But uh, we liked him at camp. Is he a guy that you could see helping out on the penalty kill or something? Well, that's another thing right there, obviously, is, is we just keep evaluating. I think we've done a real good job of staying patient. Now, it's easy to stay patient as long as you win in some games. But you got to win games in the meantime and figure out what you have. We've, I've said it kind of since day one, we'd figure all this out, and we will. We've been impressed with how Ilya's English has come along. He's comfortable doing media scrums, bigger scrums now. How, how smart do you have to be? He'll figure it? out, and certainly he shouldn't have learned. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. He actually seems to enjoy it. But maybe okay, it's what, I English. didn't mean to say that. Yeah, of course not. Um, what stands out about how he's, like, why has he been able to make this adjustment? It seems fairly smoothly, despite, you know, not the, the, the culture. Yeah, well, stuff. obviously, um, he's a real educated guy. Uh, university graduate, uh, his gal had already been to school at Boston College on one of those visitations, whatever. So he had the, more of an English base. Uh, as much as you speak English, you don't speak English on the ice when it's going 100 miles an hour and people are yelling out things and trying to show you things. And so what we've learned already as a coaching staff, uh, when we think we taught it good, we haven't taught it good enough, so teach it better. Uh, but I think he's an impressive, impressive guy. He's an everydayer. What I mean by that, he comes to work every single day, embraces. Some guys, the monotony kills him. Other guys, they embrace it, and that's why they get better each and every day. And he's a detailed guy, and I, uh, to me, he hasn't even scratched the surface. I think there's a lot more there. Yeah, I think his speed, puck sense, and, and obviously his hands maybe overcompensate for what he's missing out language-wise initially. Yes, for sure. No, I don't think his hands offensively have shown at all uh, like they're going to. He's got a great stick. He's smart. He picks things up fast. Um, but I think he's more comfortable right now without the puck defensively than he is penalty kill and that. And not that he doesn't have good hands or make good plays, he does. 
But I think as he gets more comfortable, you see more and more of that. He's obviously a real good player. We're lucky to have him. Mike, do you think Sandman will be back this year in the NHL? Yeah, it's a good question. We're, what we'll do is we'll just continue to monitor our team and monitor that team. You know what? Uh, everything's about the, the Leafs winning for sure, but part of that winning is making sure your players develop right. And the guys that we've overcooked seem to get to a higher end than the guys we rush. And all you got to do is look around the league. There's a whole bunch of poster child on, on waivers this year that were rushed to the league at 18 for no reason. And you know, what's the matter with being the best player? Having more fun than everyone else, having the puck more than everyone else. I never heard one kid ever complain about being the best player. Like what kind of strides have you seen Dermot make? Like well, I mean, he's just coming to tell you the truth. I mean, he's feeling better. That's just a huge part of it. And, and I noticed that he wasn't in a, an ugly gray sweater today. He was wearing black. So obviously, our training staff thinks he's on its way. There are therapy staff. And, and, and now he's got to get up to speed and in contact and drills and get going. And, and we'll push them as hard as we can to try to get them ready as fast as we can. How big is tomorrow the back to back uh, that is Minnesota's facing? Well, I just think that every game you're, you're playing is an important one. Uh, you know, we have an opportunity. And as the year goes on, these aren't as big a deal. The back-to-backs where you play in the afternoon isn't as big a deal. But it's still, you got to take advantage of every opportunity you have. And this is one in the schedule for us.